three years into the first mod project and uh, about 12 years into sailing in San Francisco Bay, we are finally out in the Pacific on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm going to sail about 10 to 15 knots of breeze. This is exciting. We have a, a fleet race today. And one of those boats was in a hurry and they asked us to tack, so we did. The boat's doing pretty good in these conditions. All right, tacking. Looks like we're kind of failing attack. What's up YouTube? This is Fossil Fool coming at you from Horseshoe Bay, right outside the Golden Gate Bridge. Today, my sailing buddy Nick Bertulis and I are going to attempt a very challenging and exciting mission. Behind me, you'll see the Golden Gate Bridge. We're gonna sail underneath it for the second time. Last time we practiced in very light winds. We're rowing most of the way. There's the boat. And we are all rigged and we're going to be heading out into the peak ebb tide. So this is going to be an exciting exit because normally you don't want to be swept out of the gate, but today we do. We are ready to go. Nick is handling the first mod under oars and in theory we should just be able to jump on and go. In theory, because in actuality we were pumped and full of nervous energy taking on such a big goal. You can see me walking towards the boat with no life preserver. I had actually left it on the boat trailer. I forgot the tiller. We had to jam a stick of eucalyptus into the tiller area. But the first time that we tried this was with a lashing. We went out with this weak lashing of our emergency tiller into these conditions that you're seeing right now. The result was that the boat wasn't performing because the connection from the tiller to the rudder wasn't solid. So we were failing a lot of tacks. Uh, I would push the tiller all the way over and wonder why we weren't turning very much. On the way back to the dock, I was steering with my hand on the rudder itself. We needed to slow down, uh, take a breath or two, and take safety seriously. We used the borrowed outboard motor to get back to the dock. That was where I found out that I didn't know where my life preserver was, and I was looking around for it in the water, thinking it had blown into the water. It ended up being that I had never had it on. So I was about to head out into the Golden Gate Bridge with no life preserver. <laughs> Using the knife and uh, the hammer and saw from Nick's van, thankfully he had some tools with him, we were able to make a really satisfying fit with the emergency tiller and the existing rudder. So we also had some food in us, gathered our breath, and went out again. We had modified our expectations for this day. We had initially thought, we're going to make it all the way to Bolinas. And now we're feeling like, okay, let's just go out and do something. Let's just go out and sail. Uh, the conditions were actually stronger at Angel Island than they were outside the Golden Gate Bridge. So I thought, all right. Let's head outside and see what it's like in the big bad ocean. Initially we stayed pretty close to the Marin coastline, uh, both for the feeling of safety, although it's not particularly a friendly coastline. Uh, we were also trying to avoid the fleet race and give them space to move out in the main part of the bay. Towards the second part, once we got more comfortable, we head out into the middle, halfway between Marin and San Francisco. We had a lot of issues with tacks. Here's one where the emergency tiller was tangling with the sheet and leading to a lot of bumbling around, which to be honest is pretty normal for a lot of my tacks, but we managed to squeeze in a pretty decent captain change. 
put my weight on the rail right in the middle of the boat where it makes the most difference. And look at this, nice speed. We got a single reef in the balanced lug. showing about 90 square feet of sail with the balance lug for a 17 foot boat should be totally manageable and it was pretty manageable we weren't dipping the gunnel very much at all very few very few seas came aboard the ones with the big colorful Spinnaker sails are heading back in and the ones with the white and black sails are racing out. And here you can see Nick taking his hand off the tiller for a few moments to adjust something, get up on the rail, and the boat just tracking. And look at that stability. And here he drops the tiller and still the boat just Slowly heads up into the wind. Nothing violent happened. Here's Nick at the helm, reaching for a passing rose. There's another white one floating by. He's stoked. He wants to show me his find. It was real. But he doesn't need it in his hand. So let's keep sailing. represents friendship. That steep point on the right is called Point Diablo, and we still have a ways to go to get out to Point Bonita, which is kind of like opposite uh, Land's End. That's where the Pacific Ocean really truly begins. That was slicing pretty nicely through the water. We didn't smack a lot of these waves. It was pretty smooth crossing the waves. camera is the Insta360 ONE X2. It's a 360 degree camera in which you select the viewing angle afterwards. So this clip has already passed through my inspection and I've selected this angle and this level of zoom. It's a very powerful camera. It's a really great tool for sailing. It's my favorite action cam. Now the fleet race has completely left us there way back on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge and we're pretty much out in this body of water alone which was a little bit intimidating I have to say like I mean everything was going really nice the conditions were enjoyable but still I don't know who would have listened to our radio call if we did call we carry a basic handheld UHF. Does that even reach to where the Coast Guard is? We have some smoke flares. 
We have our cell phones, but those are hard to use if they're wet. We do have the outboard motor that I'm borrowing. But uh, this was not really foremost on our mind today because of the conditions and because I wasn't alone. Uh, I had this feeling of safety in numbers with you know, being in the boat with Nick. And um, we were far from land. We just decided to go right out into the middle after a certain point, just do longer tacks since things were just so predictable, so nice. big red gas can on the floor behind us. Um, that was sort of our insurance policy in case we wanted to get home in a hurry. It's a borrowed six horsepower Mercury outboard capable of uh, pushing the boat to about 11 miles per hour. We used it once mostly for practicing earlier in the day when we wanted to get back in. We also have the oars and that's about it. This is as far as we went out. There's Point Benita. We're at the potato patch or we're very close to it and it looks really gnarly. We're not gonna pass through it, let's turn. We did have the idea of sailing all the way to Bolinas where Nick lives, but uh, we decided to save it for another day. I want to show you some of the issues I'm having with maneuvers. Look at this jibe. I'm facing away. I'm looking actually behind. When the jibe happens, I drop the sheet, gather up the sheet, start looking where the boat's actually heading. This is like the, the prey, the prey school of jibing. This one that's a little bit less bad, but I'm facing away. This time I don't drop the sheet. About a year ago on uh, a video on this channel, I was musing about whether I would get under the Golden Gate Bridge, just wondering whether a future version of myself would ever actually do that. It just kind of looked real big and intimidating. This moment was like very comfortable doing it for the second time. So comfortable that we actually went for one more glory run across the towers and back because the conditions were really nice at this time of day. Right around 10. It's about a mile from one tower. Can to I the kick other. it freestyle when I'm sailing across the Golden Gate? Every year or two they repaint. The main cable is a mile long. Clouds that day. There's been a request for some fossil food in like the times of old. I don't know if I can do it. But I'm gonna try. I hide. This was a joyful sail. Blowing from the west, from between the two towers. Yeah, no gust to surprise me, knock us down. We was just relaxing at this point of the day. You're on my channel. Gotta listen to my music If you wanna watch this joy
joyful sailing. Yeah. the striated clouds YouTube is a weird place How about a rap? Now we're halfway across and we ain't been knocked down by a single gust This is better than lockdown In 2020 was Cause we're out on the bay and we're beam reaching And sailing across the golden gate It's like playing basketball with Steph Curry Gotta say something about Ross Lily Stone, the designer of the first mate, scaled up, became the first mod. Nobody thought it was cool to build a boat translucent, but it was, cause I could see the shape of the water. I pursued my own dreams. Yay! Is this a flex? And is that okay to do a flex? Once in a while, is it okay to do a flex? Let me know, drop a comment. It's wet, it's exposed. Um, there's no place to crawl into on the first mod. You've got to wear the right clothing. So it's not for everybody. I ended up with this boat because I was drawn to the experience of bike sailing towing this boat to the water by bike. I wanted to make the biggest, safest boat that was still possible to tow to the water by bike. And we've had a lot of great bike sailing missions. Uh, right now I'm actually on a hiatus from bike sailing because uh, I need to revamp the, the tires and the wheels to avoid flat tires and broken hubs. And filling that void has been um, launching around the Bay Area by electric car. So we actually launched at the Golden Gate Bridge, which is not a very bikeable location. But the cool thing about it is you can do it. There's no one telling you you can't do it. So got up in the morning, had my coffee, hooked up the boat, drove to the put-in, and did this day sail, which is not revolutionary to many day sailors, but for me, it's a new era opening up. It's also helping to put the focus on sailing and skills, safety, as opposed to the bike system. Now that I've had this chance to try day sailing by electric car, it definitely is making the bike sailing feel more difficult to pull off and it's like a Pandora's box in a sense because once you go towards the car you don't go back and I feel drawn to completing and returning to the bikes uh, project especially in the summertime when the sailing is so good right at Emeryville which is two miles from home and I do want to document the return to bike sailing, hopefully a triumphant return. Now we've crossed and we're very close to our takeout point and we're about to switch to oars and I've put the boat into what I thought was a heave to formation. The centerboard is up, you could see that the the plunger is resting on top of the centerboard case I'm standing up fiddling with something and the boat starts to get turned around. I grab the tiller and then I think better of it, thinking, no, we're heaving too. The boat should be able to take care of itself, but somehow the wind shifted and dumped hundreds of pounds of water in the boat. And I don't know what I did wrong except that I think the sail was too close for heaving too. So let's take another look. The sail's kind of close. I think I'm supposed to let the sheet out further for heaving too. If the sheet's further out, then the uh, healing moment won't be as bad. 
And when that healing was happening, man, that whole side rail was pivoting the boat, acting like a big fat dagger board. Look what happens when Nick tries to get to the side. He kicks the sheet and the boom comes out quickly by about a foot. And I think it depowered momentarily, giving the wind less bite and allowing us to come back upright. I'm not sure we would have come out of this one if it hadn't been for that kick. That's what I got for this adventure, sailing out underneath the Golden Gate Bridge in my open boat, the first mod, with my buddy Nick Bertulis. Thanks for sticking around and watching this adventure. I've got more in store for you, so please subscribe, like, comment, and share this video to help me along on YouTube. Till next time, Paul Friedman, Fossil Fool, signing out.